All right, it's that time of the year we look back at the big stories and the issue of corruption is one of the key issues we had to talk about in 2019. Remember the Auditor General, Iyoko, and the procurement issues? How about the operations of the Special Prosecutor? Freelance journalist and anti-corruption crusader Manase Azura Wene uh, reveals little has been done by the current government to fight the canker. Here are excerpts of our year in review in anti-corruption. The president in his defense has said that he is, he as a lawyer and a, a human rights uh, uh, defender for many years at that, um, would always resort to process, which, which is that um, he wants the institutions to work and not have him have the, 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 the cane and whipping people all, all, um, because they've been accused of, of corruption. Isn't that... Isn't that, I mean, the, I think the, that, the best that's, that's uh, hypocritical. Set up the view. institutions, give them the resources, let them do their work. That's the highest point of hypocrisy because when John Mahama was president, didn't Nana Kufuado know that there are processes? He knew. He's on record to have said that the fight against corruption cited Judah as a sham. And in Judah, I can tell you, we retrieved 60 million Ghana cities from the ROG and the uh, Agam's group. Mm -hmm. Contracts that were cancelled saved this nation not less than uh, 200 million Ghana cities. And if you want to look at the number of years those contracts could have run, a lot of money. Two people, including Abu Gapele, who was a member of parliament, two people were jailed. President Okufado said this was a sham, that we vote for him. He now wants to teach but us. But didn't that? go through the process because I remember even yeah, so, so the what Abu what, trial trial yeah, so took saying, such a long time. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that all of these things happen under a certain regime and he called it a sham. Then he's voted, in, voted into office and he's supposed to do certain things and now he's giving excuses. And I've just given you an example <laughs> of this uh, robbing the assembly thing. The people were called, they were invited, they wrote statements he appeared a number of times. Even the Zoom line boss himself, Joseph Sinewe Japon, was called to the CID headquarters. They took statement from him. They took statement from the minister who awarded this contract, Collins Dauda, the chief director at the Ministry of Local Government. Everything has been done. There is evidence. So if you are sitting on that evidence, you are telling me processes. What processes are you talking about? Nobody said, once the allegation is made, go and throw the people in jail. You gave them the opportunity. You wrote to them to bring documents. In some of the cases, the letters the CID wrote were even not responded to. So if given them 2007, 17, we are ending 2019. That evidence is there. What processes do you need? Nobody is saying go and put them in jail. Take the matter to court. And if the court tells you that, look, this evidence you have adduced, we cannot sentence them. Then you now tell us that we are looking at processes. But when you make it a point to clear your appointees and boast publicly that they are not corrupt, everybody has been investigated and cleared. Let's look at the uh, Australian visa scandal. The scandal was committed. You've cleared everybody involved. So was this uh, committed by uh, some demons from hell who came and then did a visa scandal after that they vanished into thin air? No. Human beings did it. So once you clear everybody and you've not been able to prove that the scandal did not happen, then it means the government is complicit in all these uh, uh, corruption allegations. So if you tell me processes, I don't agree. Right. Now, Malik, um, we know from the recent Afrobarometer report that many Ghanaians now think that rather than reduce corruption or perception of corruption is actually on the rise. We know the president um, in, uh, just last week disagreed with some of these reports um, saying that his government has actually done more than has been assessed in, in some of these reports. But for you, what does this say, especially looking at the Afrobarometer itself, what does it say about the thinking of the Ghanaian people? So first of all, let's t start with the president's answers when he was asked that question and he was asked by our colleague, um, Osei Bonsu, is it Osei Bonsu? Yeah. yeah. When, when Obi asked that question about the declarations that he made when he was in opposition, that he was not corrupt, he was incorruptible, and that he would not decide over a corrupt government. He was asked the question, can he state that again? 
and he repeated the same. Mm -hmm. Now, and I was on TV and I said, well, you gave a robust answer and the president went into um, all of the funding that they've made available to corrupt corruption, anti-graft institutions such as Chiraj, Special Prosecutor's Office, Yoko, all of these organizations. And I said, that's exactly what our problem is. We believe that when there's a problem, just throw money at it and the problem just disappears. The problem just gets solved when we throw money at it. So when you have a problem with roads, announce a big sum of money for road construction. When you have a problem with hospitals, announce a large sum of money which has been voted for for the resolution of every time there is a major problem all we do is make an announcement of a big sum unfortunately whilst the money is important the money is not the solution to the problem it is determination and commitment and resilience and a willingness to do the things that we are supposed to do which will be the solution to the problem so one of the problems it is well and good that the president was talking about the funding which went to chiraj which was higher and we do comparative analysis usually which was higher than the previous government had done, which is what he said, that, unfortunately, is not the solution. Because, as you point out, the Afro-Barometer survey indicates that the perception of corruption is worsening. So if, in spite of the investments that you make, in spite of the new offices that you set up, in spite of the appointment of a renowned anti-corruption campaigner that we know into that office has been done, the people still believe that the fight against corruption is in a much weaker position, then it should worry even the president himself that the steps that he's taking do not appear to be yielding the dividends that they were intended to yield as reflected in the perception of the ordinary citizens. And that we now have to take different steps and approach things differently and to do them differently and to look at the, the measures differently and to the assessment of the efficacy of those measures must be different. Mm. Do, but do, do, you, do you think that people, why are people so angry, especially in the year under review, that, I mean, in the initial, since this president came into office, this is about the third of this Afro barometer that has been done. I think the second. The second. So, and, 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 and this is worse than it was before. Why do you think people seem to be angry, especially on the issue of corruption? What, what are the things that are coming? Because people are not seeing any resolution, even on anecdotal basis. Do all of us not come across corruption daily in our lives? especially if you deal with public institutions and organizations, do we not? So even on an anecdotal basis, there is grounds for people to say that corruption is, 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 is worsening, particularly when you do not see that it is being punished. Even when confronted with the clearest of indications, like the visa scandal, in some other jurisdictions in the world, there would have been such a seismic shift when that scandal happened, because the whole nation was embarrassed on the international stage. So catch the full discussion, looking back at the fight against corruption in 2019, uh, tonight at 8, right after Joy News Prime. You're still watching Joy News Desk. Coming up in business, MTN Tao's growth in electronic payment services despite cases of fraud. Charles Ite will have the details.